Do you want to do more to make impact? How we serve others and our world is how we pay our rent for being here. So get ready to learn how you can make a difference by simply choosing to live and lead with a socially conscious mindset. In this episode of Passion for Impact, I am chatting with Brett Colvin, Good Lawyer's co-founder and CEO at goodlawyer.ca. Now, Brett was a corporate lawyer for four years when he experienced firsthand that most business owners can't afford the legal help they need. So he quit the big firm, teamed up with a developer and a designer, and got to work on building something better. He has tips on getting started with a social enterprise platform, you know, development, growth pains, that kind of stuff. Plus, he has some valuable insights on being an industry disruptor. Brett and his team are truly doing good. Ready to listen in? Let's get this started. This is the Passion for Impact podcast with speaker, trainer, and socially conscious advocate, Tricia Miltimore. Thank you for joining in. This is Passion for Impact podcast, where we have one clear goal to educate, empower, and elevate social consciousness in people, business, and teams. Be sure to subscribe to receive links to featured companies, people, and offers. To subscribe, so easy, go to passionigniter.ca forward slash podcast. I'm very excited about this conversation today because I think everyone can relate not only to this CEO's growth and journey in some way or another, but also because I think most of us at one point in our lives have needed the services of a lawyer as a professional entrepreneur or a professional in general working in an organization. No doubt you have required the help of a lawyer. Now, they certainly cost money, and often it can be intimidating to find and work with a legal professional. Good Lawyer is trying to change that by building a bridge that better connects entrepreneurs with the fast, affordable legal help they need to start and grow their business successfully. Now, this is innovation in action. Brett Colvin is Good Lawyer's co-founder and CEO. Now, Brett has overseen Good Lawyer's growth from inception to a 20-plus person team in a short amount of time, leading them to Startup Calgary's Choice Award in 2020. Brett was a corporate lawyer for four years when he experienced firsthand that most business owners can't afford the legal help they in fact need. So he quit the big firm, teamed up with a developer and a designer, and got to work on building something better. Brett, thank you for being on Passion for Impact. Trisha, super happy to be here. And uh, I got to say that was uh, an amazing intro. So we might have to touch base offline because we might need your services. Oh, <laughs> I, full transparency, I was in radio for many years. Yeah, uh, this is, yeah, this is my opportunity to stay on the mic. I love this podcast because we get to share stories about individual people who are creating something uh, that has impact in so many different ways. And this is what Good Lawyer is all about. Can you just share with everyone your journey? I mean, it's a big journey to go from like one career path to something completely, well, not completely different, but that's a big, big change. Tell us a little bit about all of that. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think even the the name of your podcast strikes home with me, Passion for Impact, and really the decision to leave the firm and chase the Good Lawyer dream really stemmed from that passion to have a real impact, which I felt like I couldn't do within the confines of the traditional law firm. But maybe I'll back up a little bit and uh, just kind of talk about where Good Lawyer, sort of the seeds of Good Lawyer started, which was way back in law school. I'd always been an entrepreneur growing up since I was, you know, a toddler. And uh, so that was always running a business. Was, I was always very passionate about that. Ended up going to law school after my father passed away, uh, he had pushed it pretty hard and I didn't really know what else I wanted to do. I didn't want to be an accountant, which was my undergrad was in. So I went to law school without really thinking about it, got sucked up into the, the big firm recruiting process, which you kind of experienced day one in law school. And then next thing I knew I was in a big firm. And when I got to the big firm, you know, again, you go through your articling year, you don't really have time to think. But around my third year, the idea for Good Lawyer, by the way, had been percolating since law school. I did a paper on access to justice that really opened my eyes to how many people were going without any real legal advice, dealing with problems, you know, from family to wills to immigration to business. And so that seed was planted long ago. I actually bought the domain my first week of law school because my old coffee guy, Mo, 
we reconnected and, from business school. And uh, when I told him I was in law school, he just got really sullen and serious <laughs> and kind of pointed at me and said, be a good lawyer. And that really sunk in. I bought the domain and contracts class shortly after and sat on it for a really long time. And then when I had that opportunity at the big firm to slow down a little bit, I went and worked out in Vancouver for a little while. It really gave me the opportunity to think about what the future could look like and how the traditional way of providing legal services was broken on both sides, both for the clients who were you know, getting overcharged, no transparency, but also on the lawyer side where the whole objective was to bill hours and you know, not really looking for purpose beyond hitting that objective. And uh, when I saw how the sausage was made inside the firm, I knew that there was a lot of inefficiencies that we could build out through a technology platform and really connect those two groups, entrepreneurs and independent lawyers, in a way they couldn't connect before, which benefits everybody. Wow. So you had this vision and you bought the you know domain years before. It was percolating. How did you take that step to actually move forward with it? I think I really decided when I was away in Vancouver because I was working out of an office here in Calgary. I went and worked in-house with one of our big clients for a year and I sat on the train every day and I took the train in Vancouver for 45 minutes and I listened to podcasts, specifically how I built this. And I just listened to story after story after story of these entrepreneurs, you know, having an idea and then chasing it. And the idea to have an online platform where you could book and hire a lawyer at an upfront price isn't like in my mind, it seems so obvious, but really having that, that year away, listening to all those podcasts, ruminating on the idea that I'd had for a long time really gave me the the motivation to, when I got back, start thinking more seriously about building this out. And, you know, it was a big risk. The, the partners thought I was crazy when I told them I was leaving, but I haven't looked back since. And fortunately, I've been able to bring a lot of great people on this ride with me. Yeah, 20 plus employees in a short amount of time, uh, all on a platform that is so innovative. What has been the biggest challenge as you've grown over these last few years that has really stood out to you? Well, we've, we haven't even been around a few years yet, but at the, you know, since the beginning of the pandemic, which is when we really started to take off, it was just me and my two co-founders sitting around my kitchen table every day. We were able to bring on a couple really talented individuals that had worked in startups before because the three of us had limited experience in that regard. We were offering something that people wanted, which was, again, an easy way to access professional legal advice at a price you can understand. And, you know, with that, you know, initial MVP, as we like to call it, we were able to get our first few customers. I was still practicing as a lawyer and, you know, was the first Uber driver per se on the platform. And we were able to bring on some other like-minded lawyers who, you know, could wrap their heads around fixed fee services and were interested in providing a higher level of service. And uh, it just really snowballed very slowly at start. And, uh, you know, now growing much, much faster. And along the way, we've been able to bring in people. COVID was so painful for so many people. And for good lawyers' benefit, we got a ton of talented individuals who were close to our network already, but had not been available before. And, you know, COVID left a lot of people out of a job. And so we scooped up a bunch of those smart people and uh, have really never looked back. Oh, wow. So it's really fresh. Okay. So you provide services, legal services for entrepreneurs, just so people can kind of better understand that. I'm a new uh, entrepreneur and I have some needs because there's contracts with suppliers or leases, like all that kind of stuff. I can just go on Good Lawyer and and basically do I submit like a ticket or what is the process? Great question. Um, so there's a few ways to get legal help on Good Lawyer, but the, the kind of two primary ways are book a call with our legal concierge. And uh, for the most part, those aren't lawyers, but they're people on our customer service team that talk to the entrepreneur, learn about their business, and then help them navigate the platform to find the best lawyer for them. There's also the self-service model where you can just go through um, the booking funnel and answer a few pretty simple questions. 
and then that will auto generate the lawyers that can help you. Um, but really at our core, and it, it seems almost right to talk about it because it's so obvious, is fixed fee services. Not a lot of lawyers around town, especially when it comes to business issues, are keen to offer upfront prices. And that's really good lawyer at its core is there's no surprises ever. And then with the platform and the expediency that it delivers to lawyers and makes their lives easier from an administrative perspective in particular, we're able to offer new services, which we call micro legal services for those really early stage entrepreneurs um, who don't have a lot of cash. You can get that supplier contract reviewed over Good Lawyer in 48 hours for 25 bucks a page. So it really opens up the legal services market to those early stage founders, you know, those small companies that don't have huge legal budget. Now they can access professional legal help on demand for some of those things that they couldn't before. Wow, I I think this is so amazing. I get really excited because I think back to all the times as an entrepreneur myself, and we were actually we have businesses in several industries where you know even a contract with as a consultant with a company and they have their own version of it, and and I'm, it's so intimidating to know whether or not you're signing the right thing. But then the thought of having to get legal help and the cost of that, blah 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 blah. So be, to be able to access the fact that you're bridging the gap in a simple and efficient and innovative way. Uh, kudos to you. I mean, it's just, like you said, it's so simple, but so needed. And I love that you're bridging the gap. Question for mm-hmm. you, obviously with innovation and change, you're going to ruffle some feathers. How have you navigated that whole aspect of things? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I'd say we've been fortunate just because I alluded to this earlier, the the service model for legal services is broken on both sides. So, Mm -hmm. you know, today lawyers are not the happiest bunch, a lot of mental health issues, a lot of depression, a lot of substance abuse. And that again, stems from this broken business model that it, it provides very poor incentives. So that leaves a lot of lawyers very unhappy and a lot of lawyers in the solo independent settings, um, at a bit of a loss, you know, times are changing quickly and it's really hard to keep up as a lawyer and an entrepreneur, you know, which would include marketing, all, all the accounting and admin stuff as well. And so because we've had such a positive reaction from a big segment of the market, that's gone a long way and propelled a lot of partnerships for us. We've got the current CEO of the Canadian Bar Association on our strategic advisory board. You know, we've, we're doing a good lawyer summit. One of the days is future of law. And we've already got hundreds of lawyers signed up from that from across the country. At the end of the day, we are tapping primarily into a market that is going completely unserved. And so, you know, the big players, the big national firms, like the one I used to work at, they're not really concerned with us. Like we're just kind of a a small fry in their mind. I, I think it's probably not so different than the big old hotel chains in the early days of Airbnb. I do see there being a day where they view us as more competition than kind of a an interesting sort of side piece. But at our core, again, we're we're focused on serving this completely unmet market. And so we've ruffled a few feathers. We've had some hiccups along the way, but we've built our team out in such a way and we're taking approach to the the legal industry in such a way that we've minimized those ruffles, I'd say, so far. Oh wow. Cool. Okay, so you're uh, gaining all kinds of momentum. You've had this vision. You've created. You're engineering the experience on the personal side. How has that been going for you? I mean, obviously, as entrepreneurs, sometimes you can put so much into it all the time. Like, what kind of tips and tricks do you have for people who are starting down this journey? Things are taking off. It is making impact, and there's that personal side of taking care of yourself. <laughs> That's a great point, Tricia. And uh, you know, if I'm being honest. I think that's a side that doesn't get enough attention in my life Mm -hmm. currently. My tip for anyone thinking about founding a startup, global ambitions, it's definitely not a nine to five. It's going to suck more out of you than you could ever imagine. And, you know, the personal care piece is something that I haven't had nearly enough time to focus on, but uh, it's something that is becoming more clear to me 
every day. You know, I've been going full steam for over two and a half years and I'm definitely not burnt out, but I can feel exhaustion in a way that I, I don't recall from, you know, a year or two years ago. So it it is critical to take care of yourself. And, you know, fortunately for me, there are a ton of people around me who are hugely supportive and, and push me even when I, I don't want to be pushed uh, to take care of myself <laughs> a bit better. Okay, that's good to know. So what, what's one thing you're going to start doing every week to take care of yourself? Not to put you on the spot or anything, Brett. I think if there's one thing that I, I'd like to start doing every week, it would be uh, getting out for an activity. I played in a soccer tournament this past week, and I used to be a big soccer player. And uh, it was it was amazing. It was uh, so much fun. And I felt like I got hit by a truck on Sunday. But <laughs> It was, it was well worth it. And, um, you know, the gym has never really been my, my cup of tea. I get too bored, but going and doing activities with friends is something that, uh, I love to do. And so something that I'm going to keep trying to do in the winter, I think we're going to be looking at uh, a good lawyer squash tournament. Nice. Yeah. That'll keep you active. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the plan. I need, uh, need to have some friends involved, uh, to, to keep me committed. Otherwise, uh, you know, it could fall away. <laughs> right? I'll be calling you up. Be like, Hey, remember that conversation we had on that podcast? Are you playing in the squash? We'll, just, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's the play. <laughs> Soccer season's almost over. So it's going to have to be squash season. And isn't it true that I find this all the time when I do coaching work and strategy work with social enterprise companies, is it's so easy to use the angle that I'm creating this for the better good, right? The impact that I'm, that this is going to have. And then you get a team involved in it. And it's, uh, I think it's so easy to kind of get sucked into that vortex that it's not just work, it's like impact, but we do have to take the time to have fun and nurture those relationships. So good on you that you're putting that into focus. Yeah, try doing doing my best. I'd say that uh, most people on the team do a much better job of it, and I'm I'm lucky to have them around because they do lead by example in that regard. Nice. Well, that's good. Hey, okay. Question for you about the whole development side. A lot of people have ideas about creating apps and online platforms, um, but they get kind of stuck at the development side because they they don't know anything about that. So you've been through that process. Any kind of advice you'd like to share there? Definitely. As we could tell at the beginning of this call, when I was trying unsuccessfully to set up the microphone, I am not the tech <laughs> guy in the bunch. Um, you know, I, I have the business lean. I had the subject matter expertise being a lawyer, but I have didn't have a clue as to how to build this out. And so my starting place, which seemed like the only option, was to find someone or someone's that could join me. And uh, I definitely lucked out in finding my two co-founders, one of whom I'd been, you know, f in a friend group with for a really long time, our chief product officer, and then the other who was the younger brother of uh, another guy who's now on the team, also from high school. So I was fortunate that I could plug into my network. And on the first try, find kind of the two guys that would co-found this company and build the product. But my advice would be, you need to find someone and outsourcing it, you know, across the pond is probably not going to be able to get you where you need to go. Ultimately, you need to find someone that knows what they're doing on the tech side to join you on the journey. And, you know, how do you do that? You do it with a, a great story, ideally some investment, but, you know, often you don't, won't have that that early days, but you need to, to share in the ownership of the company with someone that knows what they're doing and someone that's going to stick around. Okay. So I like that, that they have some kind of investment into the vision beyond just a contract to create it. Yeah. If you want to build a scalable platform, you need, you need co-founders. Okay. That is really good advice. Any, anything else like that from the beginning learnings that you think, Oh man, if I had just known this, I could have saved myself so much time and energy, perhaps even money. Y yeah. I'd say, uh, don't overbuild your first try. We okay. certainly did that. I mean, we were building it out of my apartment when I was still at the firm. So we weren't publicly announcing it. And it was just kind of this first iteration. But as soon as we put it in people's hands, we learned so fast. So I'd say my tip there would just be try to launch as early as you possibly can, because trying to build something too good 
first try is going to slow you down and dramatically increase your chance of failure. Mm -hmm. I have a little saying, launch, tweak, repeat. It's actually a song that I get to sing. It's the only song I sing in public, (laughs) but yeah, launch, tweak, repeat, right? Just do it over and over again. 100%. Like, you know, we're at a place now where we've got enough of a customer base and new customers coming in all the time that we're able, like all of our development now emanates from very clear customer problems, either on the entrepreneur or the lawyer side. And so we don't have to make things up very often. You know, sometimes you got to go and try something brand new, but virtually all of our development is going into solving problems that we're watching happen in real time. So um, when you get to that place, you can learn and tweak better and faster. But even in those early days, that's why it's so important to launch as soon as you have something that, you know, it could be just be a spreadsheet and you could be faking the whole thing, but you got to put it in people's hands to see if they're interested in buying it from you. Okay. This is good tips. Hey, what's one of your favorite books that you've read? Good to great. Oh, really? Okay. Shoe Dog was also really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you read or do you listen to podcasts or do you do the audio book thing? How do you consume your learnings? Probably 90% audio, listening to audio books and podcasts. Uh, Mm -hmm. I read a little bit if I want to take notes or something in the margins. And then I read a lot of articles as well. But yeah, I'd say audiobooks and podcasts is how I learn 89, 90%. I'm with you on that one. I love to read a book, but I usually fall asleep within the first three pages, even if it's an amazing book. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like to pace and think. And um, for me, you know, there's a lot of reading and writing, you know, emails. But ultimately, I just find it more enjoyable to, to throw something in the AirPods and uh, pace around thinking thinking about it. Okay, so here you are now CEO of goodlawyers.com and you have a team and you've created this vision. Good lawyer, so, good lawyer singular.ca. Oh, goodlawyer.ca. I'm sorry. I got I got the URL wrong, but now we can talk about it extra so we make sure we get it out there even more. So goodlawyer.ca. So here you are and thank you for correcting me. You're a leader now, like you're, you have a leadership role. So what has been the biggest challenge and what has been the biggest like um, enjoyment out of that process? I think for me, um, I'm, I've always been a pretty good motivator and deal maker. So what I think I've enjoyed the most and have been most successful at is bringing people on, like getting people to buy in fully and, you know, they're, if you look at our team, we've got life, so many lifers here. Like these people are amazing. They're super committed. They own their piece of the pie. And uh, we really have built this amazing culture and dynamic pretty unintentionally. But, uh, you know, we're trying to formalize that as we go. So that's been the best part. I'd say the hardest part for me is I'm not a huge planner. And there's an element of my, um, how do I put this? I like to move fast and make decisions quickly. And that is hugely helpful in a startup, especially in the very, very early days. But ultimately, you need to provide a clear vision. And, you know, you got to be able to take that more long term view with the recognition that things can change. But I'd, I'd say that's been the most challenging part for me is trying to provide um, a clear, clear enough vision that everybody can feel aligned and, and know what exactly they should be working on and how it ties into the bigger picture. And as we've grown so quickly, you know, it's made it, cha- it was easy when there was three of us, but now that there's, you know, 23 of us, it's a lot more, there's a lot more silos and people doing different things and more organization and um, structure required to make sure everybody's pointing in the same direction. So I've been great at getting people on the bus and now, you know, figuring out how to direct it to the best of my abilities is the next challenge. Mm. I find definitely with companies and impact leaders, it's like yeah, keeping people on the bus, kind of going rowing, you know, proverbially in the same direction. Um, do you ever do any kind of one-on-ones with your team members? Uh, what any kind of? Pro- I know you're young in in kind of your 
process, but so far, what has worked for you? Because people in the same level that you're at right now may be able to extrapolate from this. What has worked for you for connecting with your team members? Yeah. And again, I think this kind of ties into the last question quite a bit. I'm very good at the ad hoc interpersonal stuff. And mm -hmm. I can, you know, usually have a pretty good sense if someone needs a, a pick me up or if someone needs a little more of a push. Um, but I have not been great at structuring some of the more formal one-on-ones. And we've had some guys on the team that have worked in startups before and, and have brought a bit of that culture to us that I'm trying to adopt sooner rather than later. But again, that's been that structure and that formality, which I think are important, especially for one-on-ones with you know your key people. So again, another thing that I'm, I continue to, to try to work on and build in enough uh, enough of an understanding and structure that you get the benefits because people prepare for those meetings and um, they're formal for a reason, but keeping enough of the fluidity that, you know, the startup can still be dynamic and, you know, change on the fly if necessary. So that balancing act has, has and will continue to be, you know, a struggle. But uh, again, I'm super lucky because, I'm not the only leader on this team. There, there are a lot of leaders on this team. And so they carry a lot of that burden when I might be faltering. I love how open you are to the idea about your own growth and evolution and that you're you know, relying on other people. I think a lot of the times uh, startup companies, especially when you have teams built so quickly, you know, sometimes it's, it can be intimidating, right? Like, am I doing the right thing? Am I making the right calls, but the fact that you have a full team and you rely on them, I just, by just sharing your story, I, I know other people in similar situations are like, oh yeah, okay. I feel that, I feel that way too. Or that's something I need to work on or, you know, however, however it may be interpreted, but good on you. That's awesome that you're open like that. Well, yeah. I mean, I think that's something that's important when you're, you're trying to bring people onto your team. One, as you know, a founder, you need to have that learning mentality but when you're bringing people on, that's one of the key things that I also want to see is, you know, do you have an intensity, which is often indicated through, you know, succeeding in some other area of life, whatever it might be. And do you have an openness to learning? Because nobody knows what they're doing in a startup because it changes every day. <laughs> so yeah. you have to take on that learning attitude, you know, be willing to fail fail often, fail fast. So you can, but also, you know, making sure that you learn from those experiences and you share them with the rest of the people on the team. So I think that's been one of the things about this group is uh, we've got a bunch of intense learners and, uh, you know, we're a family. So sometimes we have to have tough conversations, but we're all going generally in the same direction. And certainly we all have the same object, like ultimate objective to build this successful company that, you know, greases the wheels of entrepreneurship around the world. But yeah, that, that learning mentality and um, patience with each other as we learn has been super important and critical to our success thus far. Mm, like empathy for each team member as everyone grows and develops. So you, sorry. So key. Yeah, right? It's so true. And it's, if it's not there, then it, people just are kind of scared. And, so. and you know, we've been doing this for long enough that I've seen it happen. And I've seen people morph into, into more, uh, myself included. And it's just been so rewarding to see, um, you know, people on the team pick up the mantle and, and carry the whole company forward on their backs. And uh, yeah, it's just been such a rewarding experience. And again, chasing something good, something that's going to have a positive impact with people that are smart, ambitious, and, you know, that you love is just the the best thing in the world. I love that greasing the wheel of entrepreneurs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's great. Yeah. What's up next for goodlawyer.ca? What's the next step and vision moving forward? Next thing for us is just uh, honestly doing what we're doing, just trying to be the go-to place here in Canada first mm -hmm. for entrepreneurs to get the legal help they need. And, you know, we do have some much grander ambitions than, than doing that in Canada. But for us, the focus is exclusively helping our fellow Canadian entrepreneurs and, and trying to give them, you know, a competitive edge because they can get legal help better, faster, cheaper than their counterparts in other countries. Um, so really that's our, 
entire focus, we've done a, a great job at um, building the brand and the notoriety, especially uh, out here in the West. But uh, we've got a lot of work to do in Ontario and the rest of the Eastern provinces. So that's where our head and our focus is going to be moving forward as we continue to build more products and help more entrepreneurs. And so such a beautiful vision. I love it. Of course, I love anything social enterprise, obviously. Well, yeah, you know, but... we, haven't, we haven't taken the plunge and done the B Corp thing, limited resources internally, but absolutely, you know, take a look at our About Us page. We are about having a positive impact. And, mm-hmm. you know, I feel blessed to have fallen into this problem because it resonates with me. Like I said at the beginning, I've felt like an entrepreneur since I was a kid. I love business. And I was so frustrated in the traditional law firm environment because I felt like I was hampering, I was slowing them down and uh, I didn't see a good reason why. I remember the one I always heard was, this is how we did it before, so this is how we'll do it today. And like that was not good enough from my perspective. And uh, you know, the more entrepreneurs we can help from our perspective, get the legal help they need, connect them with partners for all sorts of other business needs they have, the more successful ones we'll see. And, you know, entrepreneurs change the world. They certainly do. Absolutely. If you have have a mantra that you live by or some kind of uh, leadership wisdom that you, you know, think about all the time, what would that be? What's what's some, the best wisdom you've ever received or use? The best wisdom I've ever received. Not to put you on the spot yeah, again. No, that's a, it's a great question. <laughs> um, I'm sure that it would have come in from a podcast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but the, the sort of mantra for the company, which has resonated and, and I see it every day and, you know, people will high five and like say it and things like that. And it, it puts a smile on my face for sure is just the idea of doing good. Um, mm. you know, that's our, our sort of motto is do good. And again, we've picked an area where we can do some, something that, no one's really done before with a platform like good lawyer but doing good and that means doing good work but also serving that higher purpose you know we're not in this to make the money the money will come as a result of being successfully you know in in trying to improve the world and you know the thing i love about this team is everyone has a huge vision you know no one's here thinking that we're going to be a mid-sized canadian law firm everyone's here thinking we're going to be the airbnb of you know, entrepreneurs when it comes to getting their legal needs served. So um, wow. having that do good mentality at our core, I think, has differentiated us from other law firms in the market. I mean, we're not a law firm, we're, we're a platform, but um, it's really differentiated us within the legal industry and uh, has served as sort of a good um, directionally sort of yardstick. Uh, it's vague, but that's that's part of the beauty of it is, you know, Everybody knows what it means to do good or to do bad, and we're focused on doing the former. Thank you, Brett. Now, Good Lawyer is all about having an impact and helping entrepreneurs succeed with better, faster, and more affordable legal help. You can be found at, I'm going to get it right, goodlawyer.ca. And I understand you have a promo code, friends free, all in caps. It's friends free, one word. And if you go on their platform and use that promo code, you'll get your first advice session with any lawyer in their network for free. That's cool. You got it. Yeah. And uh, if anybody books a a call with one of our lovely legal concierge, um, just mention that uh, you heard this podcast. And if you can't remember the promo code, uh, one of the guys will, will help you out with that. That is very kind. Well, Brett, again, so appreciative of your time and for your wisdom and sharing your story on passion and for impact. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Trisha. This has been uh, a delight and uh, love what you're doing as well. Keep it, keep it up. Passion for impact. What, what it's all about. Thank you. Passion for impact is sponsored by the inspire store. Need a gift that inspires? Inspire Store features exclusive ethically made goods and jewelry that embodies these three words. Yes, you can. Every purchase supports Food Banks Canada. Plus, you will receive Trisha Miltimore's popular personal development Shift Up e-course. Empowerment awaits you. Shop with impact at inspirestore.org. If you love learning how to live and lead in a caring and fulfilling way, and you find this show inspiring, please share with your friends, rate and review this podcast. 
Visit passionigniter.ca for more details, including information on our new Rock Your Leadership program for social entrepreneurs. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the Passion for Impact podcast. Visit passionigniter.ca forward slash podcast to subscribe for episode notes, links and special offers from show guests. Cast your vote. Make your impact. One socially conscious choice at a time.